As you can see, I'm working for Red Hat, you know. <laughs> and after this fancy, behind this fancy name, which doesn't mean a lot, I'm going to talk about the integration between Ansible and Open Daylight, and more specifically, specifically Ansible networking. So this is a little bit of the agenda. What is Open Daylight? What is Ansible? Please raise your hands if you know what is Open Daylight. And Ansible? Oh, pretty good. So I can go much quicker then. Um, the third point, um, we are going to talk about the integration between those two, uh, these two technologies. And then um, I'm going to show a video of a, of a demo. So they will, they will not be hands-on, actually. But what is Open Daylight? Um, it's an open source project. Uh, it was created with all these uh, SDN um, uh, wave. And one of the, the um, uh, definitions that I like the most about Open Daylight is that it's like the middleware for, for network services, right? So it's not just an HDN controller. It's, uh, it's a kind of a platform to create network services. Uh, Red Hat was a Platinum uh, founding member of the project. And uh, it was, it's quite interesting because the, the presentation from Laszlo is, is the, the architecture is pretty much the same. And it's, so you will understand easier. Um, the, the, the heart of the Open Daylight is this blue box here, which is called MDSAL, Model Driven Service Abstraction Layer. And what it, it allows you to do is to, to model your network service via a, a language called Yang, where you can define attributes, RPC calls, or any kind of parameter. And there will be some rendering of, of this model into Java classes that are ready to, to be implemented, right? Um, it also provides uh, uh, the databases, like we have uh, two different data stores, configuration and oper operational data store. And on top of that, we have uh, what is called northbound applications. So we have, um, uh, you, you can do many things with it. Uh, we have um, Kubernetes uh, networking management, we have service function chaining, network virtualization applications, so uh, there's plenty of them. And in the south of this blue box below, uh, we have what we call um, southbound plugins or protocols. So we have OpenFlow, OVSDB, BGP, and so on. And what we want to do here, what we want to show is, is basically a prototype, but uh, it, it could be quite promising, is to integrate Ansible as one of these southbound plugins. And now, why Ansible? Um, mainly because you know, it's one of the fastest growing projects, uh, I think, in, in, the, in the last decade. Uh, there's a huge community. It's very simple to use, like um, writing a, a playbook, uh, which is like a recipe of tasks that you want to automate. It's very, very easy. There's uh, thousands of modules to, to use. Um, uh, unlike Puppet or Chef, you don't need a, an agent on the target machine that you want to automate. And, and it's very powerful. You can automate servers, storage, and what we are going to talk about here, uh, network devices. So uh, there are like 50, more than 50 platforms supported and 700 modules, something like that, for just Ansible networking. Um, and of course, it's not only switches and, and routers. You can also, there are uh, load balancers and any other kind of platform. Uh, the way Ansible is a structure, uh, we have Playbooks, which are the recipes where you write uh, your your task that you want to automate, and then some roles, which is like a group of of tasks around a, a same topic, let's say. And in in Ansible networking, we have uh, function roles and provider roles. I'm going to explain better with with an example. The demo is going to be about creating an L3 VPN between two endpoints, two routers. So our a uh, function role is basically to create a VPN or delete a VPN. And that's very simple. That, that's something that everyone understands, and you don't need to care so much about how it's going to be implemented. The implementation details are uh, embedded into the provider roles. So imagine you have a lab with heterogeneous hardware. So with you, you have Cisco and Juniper. Um, and another vendor comes, for example, Dell, and says, hey, uh, I will give you a very good deal with this bunch of hardware. Take it because the only thing that you want to, you have to provide, or the vendor will have to provide, is the provider role for for that same uh, function role for creating the VPN. 
So the, the beauty of, the, of Ansible networking is that you get an abstraction layer, and the, the user doesn't need to care about the implementation details. And the provider roles will connect to the devices and configure whatever is need to be configured. So the integration is uh, mainly these two boxes here. We are using Ansible Tower as a GUI to interface with Open Daylight, uh, just not to send like uh, ResConf calls uh, via CI. But uh, the important part is here. Uh, Ansible is is a stateless, right? And it was meant to be like that. The thing is, uh, from the network uh, operator standpoint, you need some kind of a state. You need to to have to know the state of the, of the network and. Ansible can cover the management plane of, of, the, uh, of the network, but not the control plane. It's not an SDN. And that's what, the, uh, what Open Daylight provides. Um, it provides state, it provides network topology. So I, I think that the combination could be very, very powerful. So the demo is about creating an L3 VPN. This is all running in, in one server. It's virtualized, and we have a bunch of uh, virtual machines. These four boxes that you see here uh, are acting as PE routers, and which are the, the routers that are in the service provider network. And we are assuming that um, some underlying connectivity is, is provided, like MPLS and BGP and so on. So uh, these PE routers will have uh, customer premises uh, routers connected to them. And, and from Ansible Tower, we will instruct Open Daylight to create a VPN between two of these uh, P routers. So one, once the, the VPN is created, uh, we will be able to see <coughs> two of these C routers uh, being able to, to ping each other. Right? So uh, in the end, what it will do, Open Daylight will, uh, knowing the topology, will execute uh, uh, L3 VPN uh, Ansible role. And, and the provider roles will connect to, for example, the Cisco boxes. It, it doesn't matter is, uh, if the boxes are virtualized or, or physical. And we'll configure the VRF, the interface, the IP in the interface that is connected to the CE router, and so on. So this is the operational workflow. But I'm going to show you in, in the video because I don't have so much time. Yeah. Can you see it, more or less? Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can explain anyway. <laughs> it's OK, no problem. So um, this screen is showing the CLI of the terminals of, um, two C, of the two C routers. These are the routers that are in the customer premises or at home, right? And uh, as if you can see here, we have this IP 10.10.10.5 and 20.20.20.5, different networks. So what we are going to do, like I'm showing that, uh, that IP, and um, I'm going to try to ping each other. OK, ping doesn't work. So this is Ansible Tower. Um, it's a GUI to, m to manage Ansible playbooks and roles and things like this. What we have here are different templates. The job template is like basically one uh, playbook, let's say. And a workflow template is a chain of different job templates. So um, what we are going to do is execute the configure site template, and we will pick two, the two endpoints of the L3 VPN. Uh, we have a, a bunch of parameters, like the, the site name, uh, the IP of the P router, of the interface that the P router faces to the C router. So what we are doing here is pushing information to open daylight from the first site. Now we are going to execute the same um, with the second site. The other endpoint, OK, we change uh, the, the VPN ID doesn't change because it will be just one. Um, 
we change the name of the node. Okay, it's executed. You can see, like, Ansible Tower provides logs and, and everything. It's, it's pretty cool. Now we will execute the managed L3 VPN service, we'll, which will do, uh, it will push the information to uh, Open Daylight to, to create the, the, the L3 VPN. This is Skydive, it's another open source uh, tool that allows you to monitor the, the network. And as you can see, this is the underlying uh, infrastructure. So you can see <coughs> the box is connected. And this is the VPN. And there is no links between, between this, uh, these items. So now, once we execute, sorry, we execute the manage L3 VPN, it will create the VPN, it will uh, SSH into the boxes, configure the VRF, uh, the IP in the interfaces, and so on. I'm going to skip a little bit. Now we see uh, the create L3 VPN is in green. Now we are pinging if it's correct. And suddenly the ping starts working, right? So now let's see that the L3 VPN will be uh, established. And, and the people connected to this C router will be able to connect to the other uh, side of the network. And the, um, the overlay. Um, drawing is, is connected now. You can see uh, the interfaces so that there's a, a bunch of information there. Um, sorry for going so quickly, but that's basically it. If any question, uh, I will be outside.